As the title of this video suggests, today we're gonna look at how to write the main characters' names in Chinese from the Chinese drama Chen Qingling, The Untamed. Before I start the video, I have to make a disclaimer. I am not, not an expert of writing Chinese calligraphy with a brush pen. When I was very little, I did learn for a while writing with hard-nipped fountain pens. And it's a totally different animal when you try to use a brush. So if you happen to be an expert in Chinese calligraphy, please don't feel offended by my not-so-ideal writing skill. In this video, I just want to show my audience how to write the names of those characters in the correct order and explaining the differences between simplified Chinese, which is used today in mainland China, and the traditional Chinese, which has been how Chinese was written for many, many hundreds of years. Now, that was just my practice in page and not really very good. So let's flip to a new page. I'm using a Muji brush pen, but really you can use any brush pen um, of your liking. Let's see if you can see the uh, name of the pen. Or it can be really hardcore and have ink and um, traditional brushes. I actually do have them, but um, in that way, I kind of have to write on Xuanzhi, which is the rice paper, which just makes things really complicated. So, <laughs> resolving to this. And first, I'm gonna write Lan Zhan's name, his proper full name, that is in simplified Chinese. His name, Lan Zhan, two characters, only one of them looks different between the simple and traditional version. When you write Chinese, the general order of the stroke is from left to right, from top to bottom. First stroke is horizontal. Two, that's vertical. Now we're writing simplified Chinese. That is his surname, Lan. Uh, it looks okay, huh? not ideal. I think when I'm filming it, I'm much more nervous than I'm writing it, you know, normally. So it kind of like, look at that stroke. Doesn't look very pretty, but hey. So that is his surname. Now let's look at his given name, Zhan. It starts with what we call pianpang, which is the side, the left part. And in this, it's a water. It represents water. Dot, dot, dot. What we call san dian shui, three dots of water. When you see a Chinese character that has this left part, it just means this character has something to do with water. Um, I forgot to mention, this part of lan is read as cao zi tou, the head of grass, which means the origin of this character has something to do with plants, with grass, with vegetation. Zhan is finished. It's not ideal. If you look at the um, proportion, these two characters, right? Not very well written. This part should be probably longer. And then the three waters should be lower or this part, the right part should go up a bit. That will look better in terms of proportion. When I finished this video, I will have a top down shot so you guys can see. In order to make my hand not hiding my strokes, I have to film it from, uh, you know, this and go down. <laughs> now this is his name in simplified Chinese. When you write traditional Chinese, there will be a small difference of the first character, his surname, Lan. Lan in traditional Chinese would look like something, okay, trying to have the perfect focus, like this. So the top part doesn't change. You still have the grass head, Cao Zi Tou. Now here, this is the change. This is how traditional Chinese is written for Lan. So if we look at the difference between these two, the change really happens just here. So basically, okay, I kind of like destroyed it, but <laughs> now you can see. 
This part is Chen. This is a different character. Where's the simplified one? Simply just make it, like you know, simplified it into two vertical strokes. Everything else stays the same. So this is Lan Zhan's name. Now let's look at Wei Wuxian. Okay, moving this very expensive notebook. It's a moleskin, but I've had it for like over five years now, and I still haven't used it. So you know, might as well. Now let's look at Wei Wuxian. Wei Wuxian's surname Wei. Okay, this one came out pretty nicely. As you can see, you start from the top, and you work your way down. Once you finish your left part, you start from top again, and you work your way down and finish the character. This character is made up with two parts. The left part is called Wei. This part is called Gui. Gui. As a character itself, you know, just writing it quickly on the side, means ghost. So it's kind of like you know he's he's kind of fated, fated to become a master of ghost. Now the second character in his official name. Now we're still writing the Chinese simplified version, which should look like this. Yun, that's the character.、Uh, okay. This is actually a character called Bei, means precious. Treasure, and double bay, and the lower part is 女 means woman. And the character itself means baby. So precious, precious treasure, treasure girl is a baby. It didn't say treasure, treasure boy, right? It just says treasure, treasure girl, which is baby. In this character, you write this stroke first. Because it's the leftmost stroke, right? Because this one is like on its right. The whole stroke order thing is a very traditional thing. When you are a kid, you are taught how to write every character in the correct order, and you kind of just learn it and remember it. But if you're learning Chinese, you come from a different cultural background, it may not make sense to you why a, a particular、uh, stroke has to happen before the other. But I'm just showing you the、uh, the many years learned <laughs> memories of me of how how to write all the characters in the proper you know like state proved <laughs> correct way. So Wei looks exactly the same, but Yun is different. Yun has simplified this part, right? So this is the current simplified version, whereas traditionally Yun is written like this, still vertical. Still the same. Now changes with two stroke in the middle, and like that. And you double it as well. Okay, that one is not very nicely written. But hey, not aiming at perfection. So can you see the difference? That part. This is Bay Bay's original、uh, look. Treasure's original form. This is traditional, and then it gets simplified into that version. So, here, trying to show you guys better. This is Lan Zhan, simplified, simplified, Lan's traditional version. Wei Yun, simplified, simplified, and Yun's traditional version. But in Chinese, people、uh, don't just have Ming name, right? Might as well just write it. I'm just not being very careful of writing that. They also have Zi, which is a name that they get when they become adult. Now let's flip the page. You know, great way of wasting paper. <laughs> Now let's see how to write. Let me just put it correctly. How to write their Zi version of their name? We're still gonna start with Lan, the surname of Lan Zhan. His Zi is Lan Wangji. Lan doesn't change. Now I'm just gonna go with the traditional version because I like it more. Traditional Chinese character turn to、uh, be much more complicated, but、um, 
they look better. Lan. Wangji. Wangji. So first, let me write simplified Wangji. Wang doesn't change. Wang is the same, whether it is ah, that's a really bad stroke. Anyway, whether it is the simplified version or the traditional version, Wang is also a top and bottom structure character. The top is this character Wang, which means death. Yeah, cool, isn't it? And then the lower part is Xin Heart. So when you forget something, that's the character's meaning. Forget. It's like death on top of your heart. <laughs> I just love how Chinese people look at stuff sometimes. Okay, ji, ji can mean a lot of things. It can mean machine. It can mean opportunity. You know, so it's multiple meaning character. This is a very typical left and right structure character, and quite simple. So that's a simplified character. Okay, I hope.、Uh, I hope the focus hasn't. Totally moved away. The left part is wood, and this part is ji, which means numbers, a couple of how many. Now we have a very weird combination because this is traditional character. This is both traditional and simple because it's the same. But ji now here is simple. So what does ji look like in traditional character? Well, it's actually pretty complicated. So here, let me show you. The left part stays the same. I'm really not good at using this brush, I have to say. The right part is a different part. If you're looking at the typo version that you get out of computer these days, this is the G that you'll end up with, which is um, you know, like pretty complicated. But if you look at ancient,、um, passed down scrolls of how Ji is written, it often looks slightly simpler than this version. So I'm gonna show you guys what you would see if you are looking at a、uh, ancient scroll. If you're seeing me hunting, <laughs> moving around my brush, it is because I'm trying to find find the focus. As I'm filming it with a very tight lens, and the focus can be、uh, really screwed up. So still, left part doesn't change, and the top part also doesn't change. Still looks like that, but then okay, this is a really badly written character. Like it's shaky, it looks muddy,、um, but you get the idea. There's a slight difference in terms of the number of strokes and how they are arranged. So if you write like that or that, you know, in calligraphy, it's both fine. So that is his zi, his adulthood name that's used by his friends, the people who are within his same generation level. And now let's look at wei wu xian. Wei doesn't change. Let's just review how wei is written from top to bottom, left to right. If you look at some ancient scroll,、um, you can see this character sometimes missing this this part, like the top stroke, what we call a pie. So something that goes in that direction is often omitted in ancient text. Wu Xian. First, let's look at his name in simplified Chinese. Wu, not having something. Although I have to say, right, for this character, the funny thing is, if you look at some very old, like Tang Dynasty writing, you can actually see this version. So, this version and the proper traditional version of Wu exist at the same time historically. But in simplified Chinese these days, this is the one we use. Now, Xian in both tradition, no, and simplified. Are the same. So this is the same character in both version of Chinese. Wei Wu Xian. This is also a top and bottom structure character, and it doesn't change whether it's simplified or traditional. But Wu actually changes. So let's look at how traditional Wu is written. 
the more complicated and kind of sexier version. Much more complicated, right? You can tell. Yeah, that's about dot, 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 dot. So these two are the same character. It's just simplified and traditional. But this version did exist historically as well. So these are the zi of those main characters. And then I'm gonna use up another page just to waste paper to write them properly and show you guys from a top-down view. So this is my first video of writing Chinese characters. Hopefully it's useful, hopefully it's fun. Do let me know what you like and dislike about this type of video so I can improve it for future videos. And if you also have ideas about what other characters I should write for you, do let me know as well. Thank you for watching Avenue Extra, which comes from Avenue X. And I'll see you in my next video. Take care.